Yes, good evening um, and um, a very warm welcome to the cinema of the German Film Institute and Film Museum. Um, I will talk in English because um, our guests um, will be also um, talk in English. And um, yes, we have been showing all this month already films from um, Norwegia, um, which is guest of honor this year at the Frankfurt Book Fair. And um, we are also very honored that we can have um, the film program here, um, which we um, did together with the Norwegian Film Institute. And um, I want to, uh, to thank also Astrid Blindheim from the Norwegian Film Institute, who is also here tonight. Um, for this wonderful program. <laughs> and um, I am also very, very honored for tonight. Um, it's a very special screening we have here, um, because first of all, it's a world premiere, a cinema world premiere. Um, the film, yes, <laughs> the film was just finished um, one week or two weeks ago. Um, it already has yesterday his first TV screening in um, in Norwegia, because it's um, also about um, Jan Eric Ford. He has his 18th birthday tomorrow. And um, we are very, very honored that you are here tonight. A very warm welcome. <laughs> and also a very warm welcome, of course, to um, Eva Kwame, Elsa Kwame, um, who made the film and is a producer of the film. And yes, had the idea to do this film. And um, maybe I would like to ask you um, to come in front um, for just a few minutes. Um, because um, unfortunately, Jan Eric Ford he won't be here at the end of the film because he has to go back um, to Norwegia because he has to celebrate his 80th birthday tomorrow. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, yes, please um, come here in front on the stage. And maybe you can tell us just um, a little bit about your collaboration, how it started, how it's feeling um, as a poet to be seen on the big screen. How was it for you to be filmed? Elsa, Elsa Kwam uh, is working on a film uh, um, for the story of Ruth Meyer, who was an uh, Austrian uh, young girl student that came to Norway in 1939 and was taken to Auschwitz in 1942. It's a very moving story and she left behind a number of diaries. So we have the story of Ruth Meyer. That is what uh, Elsa is working on. And as a side project from that, she asked me if she could make a portrait of me. So, so this is the the beginning of the Ruth Meyer story. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, and, uh, did you, uh, yeah. Um, and how did how was the collaboration? I mean, did you had um, already a little bit in mind how the film lo was looked like, or did you work together or invented things together? Um, how was it when you worked together? No, she, she was the caretaker of the different uh, shootings and I I was uh, just in the same uh, corporation. <laughs> <laughs> same company. I'm on, I'm on at work, you used to say. I'm just <laughs> at working. Uh, I can say a little yes. about that too. That, um, uh, I th uh, Jan Erik Wall is one of the most Im important and influential personality of, of uh, my generation and many generations afterwards, I think. And uh, I was uh, very astonished that there hadn't been made any documentaries about Jan Erik Wall since the uh, early 90s, I think, which now are quite old programs. And uh, there's a reason for this also because it's quite Difficult to catch. <laughs> uh, well, he is um, uh, at the same time he is uh, in his poems very, very intimate and, and close, uh, and he's a very active man, a very physical man. And I wanted to kind of I like all these sides of, of, of you uh, very much because uh, some people are just one thing; they just sit and write, and then when they go out, they can't see the sun. 
Some are on, only in the sun and the mountains and skis, and when they write, it's not very interesting. And others are only activists and very angry all the time, and that's not very interesting either. But uh, Jan Erik is very charming when he's angry. He can be very charming, and very he wants to move the mountains all the time. And sometimes he succeeds, and then it's wonderful. Mostly, you don't. But you try, you try. And uh, to, to, to film it, I try. I thought I, I have to film him when something is happening around him. So we started actually with an exhibition of his ex-wife, uh, Cecil Poske. She was a very beautiful exhibition, 30 years too late. Uh, she died uh, very young, actually. And uh, the next move was when we, he was taking out his lambretta for the summer. So I, I, and I like that way of working, that when there was something happening, I should try to get a camera and a team. And at the same time, I was working with financing, and all this happened to kind of go together. And thanks not uh, very much to Frit Wood, which is here present today, Ben Dirwal's week, who came with the right money at the right time. So that's how this film has developed. You have seen it already? Yes. Pardon? You have seen the film I've already? I've you have seen, seen a preview of it. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you liked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> disregarding what I think, uh, a number of people like it. So then I like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Erika has still not seen the whole finished film with the finished music, the finished picture. He's seen it on a small screen, I think you'll like it in the end. <laughs> <laughs> My wife likes it because she saw it on Norwegian television last night and mailed me and said so. And a number of friends uh, <laughs> did the same thing. Yes, then let's so, uh, uh, I can say something also that, that um, uh, are there many Germans here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'd like to hear afterwards what how it is for you to see it, who come from another language and who come from another cultural background and who has not probably read Jan Erik Wall's poems before. Uh, so if we can stay a little after, I would be happy to hear. I'm the proof that the film is about reality. Or about the real person. Yes, uh, you said Jan Erik has to take a flight tonight. He said um, it's like Doris Day. He comes, presents, and goes away. So we can say the Norwegian Doris Day. <laughs> anyway, it's very, 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 very happy that you are here. The day before you turn eighty years, and uh, we really wish you a happy birthday celebration and happy other 20 years at least of activity. So. Thank you for the film. Um, we have um, really managed to put a lot of things about him into this film, which um, I like um, very much. So I think we have quite learned something about the person. Um, Maybe can you tell us a little bit about the organization of the material? Um, you have a lot of archive material also in it. Um, how did you um, select this? Um, is there a lot of more? Did you have to choose from a lot of archive material? Or um, maybe can you tell us something about your choice? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, there's a lot of archive <laughs> material, very much archive. And also we have filmed him for, for quite a uh, period. So we also have many scenes which are not in the film, which uh, there was no place for. And and um, it was a quite long editing process because uh, uh, I had many good ideas which I had uh, thought I should try out for making tension, uh, what we called, um, yeah, making tension of the film, like uh, for what 
a while it was the idea how would it be for him to go to Germany mm -hmm. and to learn German, uh, have his poems in German. But none of my good ideas worked out with Jan Erik. <laughs> he he doesn't, li doesn't like to film when he's not perfect at German. And so I had to find another thread. And uh, actually, actually, it was my editor, she, Mathilde Friedlund. She looked through all my material. And uh, then she said her favorite scene was that scene you saw in the end of the film where, he doesn't, where the poet doesn't speak. Uh, she said that's that's where the film should end, and I was why should it end there? But then I thought, in a way, he's uh, Jan Erik and I have a common love for Samuel Beckett, and in a way, he's he's a kind of Beckett character, <laughs> and uh, in a way, I think it it is it was. Um, she said that's that's. Uh, she, she she's a young editor. She's twenty eight years old, and she's not of my generation at all. And I, I thought it's interesting to see it a little with her eyes because she has she didn't know who was Cornelius Reschwick. She didn't know, uh, she had heard Lufen by Anna. She didn't know anything actually. And uh, she got more and more enthusiastic and all everybody who did it so uh, worked with this girl very, very enthusiastic by his poems. And, and uh, while uh, all the commissioners say, what, but you must get it more private, you must get into his home in Stockholm and everything, and you must really find all these things, you know. And uh, it didn't work out. Uh, and I thought, well, actually, <laughs> Doug Solsta was one of those who put, put me on the trace. He said, uh, Jan Erik Wall is one who is the most private in his poems. It's the most, it gives the most intimate details there. He, you can, in one of his poems, he wrote the telephone, his own telephone number, and a girl called him up, who became his uh, girlfriend for two years. So he's, he's, and I thought that was the right key. That, that was the right key to to his universe. And uh, um, I'm glad actually I got that key and not the private one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are there any questions from the audience? If you want to speak, wenn Sie in Deutsch sprechen wollen, dann kann ich auch in Deutsch, auf Deutsch, Deutsch verstehen. Es ja. ist einfach ein wunderbarer Film. Mehr will ich gar nicht sagen. Ich muss Ihnen dann fragen, Sie, verstehen Sie Norwegisch? Wie war es für Ihnen, diese die Gedichte zu lesen und den Film zu folgen auf derselben Zeit? Ja, ich habe nicht alles verstanden äh, durch den englischen Untertitel, aber doch so viel, dass es mich berührt hat. Also ich fand es schon sehr schön. Dankeschön. Glauben Sie, dass dies ein, wenn es auf Deutsch übersetzt wäre, für ein deutsches Publikum funktionieren könnte? Das ist gut zu hören. Sind seine Gedichte übersetzt in Deutsch? Ja, es ist äh, gerade, er hätte es ihr zeigen, äh, es ist eine große Kollektion äh, ausgekommen jetzt. Äh, das ist übersetzt von Walter Baumgartner, ein sehr guter Übersetzer. Und äh, ich weiß, ich erinnere mich nicht an der Verlag, aber ist Bjarne Büsset ist er hier. Bjarne, yeah. You can tell you can say something about that maybe. Yeah. I can say something about uh, uh, there's a small uh, exquisite uh, uh, German publisher uh, who is called uh, Klein Heinrich who has uh, made uh, the three uh, volumes of poems by Jan Erik, which is called the uh, um, Der Traummacher uh, Trilogy. Trilogy, I speak in <laughs> mixture of German and English here. Yeah, and it's 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 a really beautiful book. So you should try to find it somewhere.
And he has now, yesterday in the in the Mesa, he performed with uh, his harpist, Ellen Butker, who was here, he chat to live with Jan-Erik. Uh, and that was in German, it was beautiful, very, very nice uh, performance. He's getting better and better in German, and uh, it's just, uh, he'd, they come to Germany every now and then and, and perform. Eine Frage über diese äh, anarchistische und radikale Poet. Wie kann er äh, in diese äh, ganz konservative Akademie für Sprache und Literatur äh, eine Ehre äh, bekommen? Er hat eine sehr saubere konservative Sprache. <lacht> es ist, äh, er ist äh, sehr populär als äh, Schriftsteller. Auch bei, bei Ihnen, es ist, äh, er ist, äh, und der Per Quale, der, der Gespräch, gesprochen hat, er hat äh, gesagt, dass äh, er ist der Ma äh, Gedichter in Norwegen, der am meisten Preise gewonnen hat. <lacht> und das ist wahr. Er hat gegoogelt und das ist wirklich wahr. So, <lacht> äh, warum nicht auch die Akademiepreis? Yes. <lacht> Hello, my name is Raluca and I'm coming from Romania, Cluj, and uh, I want to uh, say that I'm very impressed by, by this movie. I was uh, also written uh, uh, my doctor degree uh, on about Jan Eric Wold's poetry and I published it in English in uh, Romania and uh, I was very impressed to see all these uh, figures like uh, Espen Hovarsson and all these, uh, um, yes, uh, literary figures, very impressive uh, Norwegian literary figures and uh, I reiterated actually all my work that I yes, had with Jan Erik Wold's poetry in, in Norway actually I had a, a semester stipend uh, scholarship in Trumso and uh, there I yes, I it, it was very impressive for me because I uh, just uh, read the articles, I uh, collected the articles from Profil, but now I saw and it, it was something else. Uh, Thank you for the movie, so. <laughs> Thank you. Great to have an expert present, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's quite wonderful. We met uh, before today in the Messe and uh, um, you carry this book. And Jan Erik is his. Uh, in the Norwegian, uh, when he, um, in Norway, he's often quite angry because he doesn't think he's been enough respected by the Norwegian Academia. And uh, we who are his fans may sometimes get a little tired of him mourning about that. But uh, in a way, it is a little true because his poems are... are Obligatory in the elementary school when oh, the, the poem about the white the white bread the white loaf is uh, is uh, everywhere in school for children, but in the academia is not very popular for some reason. Nobody have made doctorate like you did in Romania about him in Norway. That is a big pain. But then you come from Romania and have done it, so it's, <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, I'm, uh, I find it interesting because I'm also uh, make research on Jan Eric Wald's work, and I'm a, yeah, a literary scholar as well. And uh, do you have, or does Jan Eric have? Uh, um, why is he not is is not more written about him by Norwegian literary scholars? Because I find it very astonishing as well. Do you do you have any idea yeah. why? Uh, Teresa, do you have any answer? <laughs> it's, uh, you can speculate about many things, but he has, he has been a very polemic uh, uh, character, and uh, he's done very much uh, for other writers, like Gunvar Hof, who you saw here, for score and many, many. He's written quite a lot of biographies. But when he comes with these biographies, he often says, well, this Norwegian university should have done long ago. <laughs> and of course, that doesn't make him very popular. Uh, because <laughs> and and um, 
uh, he called this institute the blind institute. It's called Blindern, Norwegian University of the Blind Institute. He says that in public. And of course, that doesn't give me more friends either up there. But I think there will come a new generation and it will get all the doctorates he's dreaming about. So it's, uh, I'm not so worried about it. But I think it's a little, it's a pity, but that's not only of him. But, uh, no, that uh, people in the uh, gymnasium, we call it uh, in the high schools, uh, the, the level of literature is very low. Uh, it's very few things that are obligatory, except one play by Ibsen, I think. And they have made some kind of questionnaires and n all that generation, nobody would know who was Espen Howard Schaub. I think, or oh, 18 years old in Norway. They don't know who is Cecilia Löwed. They don't know, they know Jan-Erik Wall, I think, because he's so active. But, but um, uh, he's written 23 collection of poems. And many of these ones, I guess, are not very common known. And that is a, a tragedy of Norway, which is much bigger than Jan-Erik Wall. It's a tragedy of culture. Uh, one thing I was missing in the film in the beginning, but I think it's very good that you have not uh, implemented, is that you have no professors or critics explaining him. <laughs> A normal film would have three of them explaining who he is. But now you, you give that to us, the audience. We un understand him and explain him. And a little point which you can do or use in the marketing that in Stockholm there is only one uh, Norwegian poet, and there is also <coughs> sorry, and there is also only one uh, tram, a uh, light blue one. Oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. They bought right. one from Oslo, ah. and reopened uh, the the line from from the center to this Jewish home. So mm. that's something that's, to use. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> So what could we do to make this uh, come on German television? Are there any channels which take these kinds of, of films? If, if in Arte, but yeah. I don't know. If you have an idea, you can come to me <laughs> later. So <laughs> maybe, okay. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, maybe his music, um, if he, because maybe his poetry is not so well known as it in, but what but is about, the music performance because this maybe you should address also some younger audience i can guess so is this more more known more are they com they're more interest in his um performances and his um, music performance maybe by younger people or yeah i think <laughs> his <laughs> generation is very much my generation and the older ones but uh, he is um I can't tell. I can't tell you about that. But but uh, I think he, young people, if they happen to meet him, they they like what they see. Mm. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you for coming. And th thanks to Natasha and to Astrid Blindheim who organized this thing. Mm -hmm.